Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the EOT Glossary, a series that works as a human dictionary with qualified English teachers explaining the EOT terminology in a very engaging way. So this is the fifth episode of the series, so make sure you go back to my playlist and check the other four videos because this information can be really useful, especially if you are taking a teaching qualification or if you are just planning on furthering your knowledge as a teacher. So all the teachers you are going to see here are on social media, so don't forget to go to the description, check the links, because these guys are just doing a great job in different spots of the planet. So no blah blah blah, grab your pen and here they come. If you're an English teacher, you must have heard of the term graded language. Well, what does that mean? Graded language is classroom language that is adapted to the level of the learners in some way. Teaching English in English, especially to low-level learners, can be so difficult without one key skill, grading language. As an effective teacher, you should be able to grade your language and adapt it to the level of the learners so that they are not switched off or frustrated. How can we do that? Here are five strategies to help you help your students understand. They spell GRADE, G-R-A-D-E. G is for gestures. Use body language. If you're giving instructions, you can do this. Or if you want to ask students to listen, you can do this. If you want students to work in pairs, you can do this. But don't fall into the trap. Some gestures do not mean the same thing in different countries, so you have to be culturally aware. R is for rate of speech. Try to slow down a little bit, especially if you're teaching low-level learners. A is for authenticity. This means you need to speak naturally. Slow down, but speak naturally. D is for downsizing. Use fewer words to deliver the message. Keep it simple, short, and comprehensible. And finally, E is for efficacy. Don't stop with words. Downsize your sentences too. Well, let's try to put this into practice. Look at this sentence. All right, everyone, what I would like to do next is stand up. How can we grade it? You can simply say stand up. Another example, you're requested to meet the deadline and do the project before the second week of the next month, which is April 15. Too long. How can we grade it to make it easy and simple to understand? So you can simply say, you need to do the project before April 15. That's it. So remember to grade your language, especially if you're teaching low-level learners. Hi everyone, I'm Simply Terrence. I make creative videos for kids and I've been in international education for over 10 years. Today, I would like to introduce a new term to the human dictionary, discourse markers. Normally, we refer to them as fillers. Now, fillers are those words that we use to help organize our thoughts ideas and give structure within a conversation. But they're also a strategy employed by people who are speaking to buy time, to take turns, and also to avoid having to express their thoughts immediately. Now, depending on where you're from, they may sound a little bit different. For example, in Spain, when someone's thinking, they normally do this sound. E in the USA, um, like. And in the Philippines, they say este, or pero este. Well, it doesn't matter where you're from, every country has its unique way of connecting sentences. But the one thing that we have to learn as ESL practitioners is that we need them. Filler words play a critical role in language acquisition and are often neglected by educators because we don't think of their inherent value. Fillers help English language learners engage and think out loud within a conversation. So before you say, hey, you shouldn't be saying that, I would actually challenge you to encourage them to think out loud. Let them express themselves using fillers, not as a means of substitution, but as a way to let you know that they understand that this conversation or their conversation needs to be in English only. I'm Simply Terrence, thank you. Hi guys, my name is Ronald Villardo. I am a Brazilian journalist and teacher of English. And if you are taking a CELTA yourself, you might have come across the acronym MPFA. That stands for Meaning, Pronunciation, Form, and Appropriacy. 
and I'd like to tackle appropriacy for a while. Appropriacy means a lot of things, but in the end, it all boils down to using the right words to talk to the right people. If you're writing an email to the headmaster of your school, you're going to use a certain kind of vocabulary. Such lexicon is going to change, definitely, if you speak to a classmate or if you invite an old pal for lunch. That's appropriacy. It has to do with a lot of things. It has to do with cultural differences. It has to do with politeness. It has to do with common sense. I'm being as appropriate as I can in this video myself because I'm speaking to an audience from various countries. What might be polite in my country might as well be frowned upon in other cultures. That's why I have to be highly careful and we should teach and enable and empower our students to write appropriately. If you want to know more about that, I highly recommend you read one of the classics of ELT. There's no uh, mystery here. I'm talking about Learning Teaching by Jim Scrivener, one of the gods of ELT in the world. On page number 225, Mr. Scrivener himself has a subheading that reads, Working on Appropriacy. I do believe you're going to have a lot of fun reading it and applying it in your classes. Once again, thanks for having me. See you next time. Hello, everybody. My name is Maria Jose, and I am a teacher of English based in Uruguay. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about my experience using portfolios in the classroom. So first of all, what is a portfolio? A portfolio is a collection of work done by the students for the purpose of assessment. So what do I mean by a collection of work? Uh, that means anything that the students produce by themselves and that they can refer to it later in order to see their own progress. So personally, my students and I use a portfolio to evaluate their writing skills. So they keep all their compositions there and they can see the whole writing process. So they have their pre-writing stage, the first draft, the second draft, the editing and the publishing. And something that I really love about this tool is that it promotes lots of critical thinking. So there, during the process, um, my students include peer assessment, self-assessment, and this allows them this special moment of interaction among each other and they can give themselves some feedback on their work. They can analyze how much they have improved. They can see how independent they have become in this process of writing and they can see and finish their work with this sense of achievement. So I really recommend you to give it a try use this tool and help them improve their own work and become more independent learners by using it. A phoneme is a speech sound that makes a difference in meaning in a specific language. For example, if we take the English words tip, dip and lip and we examine the initial sound of each word, we can see that when the sound is changed, the meaning of the word is changed. Since phonemes are language specific, we cannot, for example, compare two words from two different languages that only have one sound difference and say that those two sounds that we got are phonemes of this language or the other language. Also, we should note that we only need one difference in sounds between two words to extract two phonemes. And that does not necessarily have to be the same case with the letters. For example, if we take the word leap and the word lip, we can see that leap has four letters while lip has three letters, yet they have three sounds. Each of the two words has three sounds and they have one sound in difference. So those two different sounds, the E, and E are phonemes of the English language. Also, what should be noted is that some people might pronounce a sound differently from others, whether it was for their different accent or they just made an error while pronouncing this sound. But in this case, those two different sounds do not count as phonemes because they did not change the word meaning. 
that's it for today. So as always, I have to thank the five brilliant teachers that participate in this video. So don't forget to check their social media. And if you think you are up for it and you want to be in the next video, just send me a message, okay? I hope this information was beneficial. Happy teaching, guys.